to be here just a few more days to christmas a few more it's beginning to look a lot like you've been naughty or nice <laughs> well i'm not going to answer that on air but um we are glad to be here this evening because i think you have some news with us but yes but who are we we oh that is so i'm excited i am tracy <laughs> everett duncan your host of mentor me memorable moments yes, and i am your co-host william craig the third and we want to say happy holidays to all 135 nations and all 50 states that tune into wlvs radio yes we're glad to see you and glad to see that you are Glad to see us. <laughs> yes, always, always. So, William, yes. I heard that there's uh, some things jumping with the toy drive. Reason for celebration. Uh, thank you to all of you who have supported the toy drives that were featured on this uh, program. And as you know, we had a couple of them this year, Toys with a Cause and Operation Christmas. I and think um, we have the slides on that. Um, Eric, can you put up slides one and two, please, so we can be refreshed? And there we are, Toys with a Cause, and we had uh, their representative, Miss Valerie McNair, and uh, she is also associated with For Him Christian Church. That's the number for Him Christian Church. And we understand that they had phenomenal turnout. They had mm -hmm. wonderful results. And I got to tell you that part of those results were because of your support. And so we thank you. And then the next one was Ms. Nicole Dias from Total Praise Ministries. And of course, her toy drive was the Operation Christmas toy drive, which was uh, also being hosted by Toys R Us. And we understand, again, that uh, you, you can still go online to ToysRUs.com, and you'll still be able to go to the wish list there and just give. Mm -hmm. And, you know, mm -hmm. um, when you go online to Toys R Us, you're going to see that most of the toys still look like no one has participated and no one has purchased those toys. That is not, not true. Right. Mm -hmm. oh, no, you decided the alternate path, which was still fine. I talked to Miss Diaz before mm -hmm. I came on to the program just to make sure that, you know, people were responding. And she said, oh, you all have done an awesome job. You have gone far beyond what the expectation was and so that led me to believe that the toys may have been picked up at Toys R Us and, right. and actually dropped at a location but Valerie McNair said the same thing they have so many toys wow. that they believe they're going to have enough left over to give to other shelters and other um, families wonderful. that are in need That's so wonderful. you did an excellent thank you. excellent thank job you. thank you yeah. very much 
And we did promise that next year we're going to connect with Valerie and Nicole because we want to go to all 50 states. And we specifically yeah. want to hit the children's hospitals to make sure that each child has a toy around Christmas time. And we're hoping that you join us there as That's well. Amazing. So now, with that said, yes, what would you like to take us to next? <laughs> we are going to do our financial management segment uh, today, and that is me. You know, I'm going to teach you how to face your lions, tigers, and bears, those oh debtors my. and creditors. Yes, um, you're going to face them, but I'm going to arm you. I'm going to empower you, and you're going to see. You're going to have that aha moment. Oh my gosh, it has always been this easy, Tracy. Oh yeah, oh yeah, it has been. But we also have have the fashionistas here too Yay. and they're going to be talking uh probably some tips maybe some uh, tricks you know we don't want you going out there being naughty and getting caught because it could be severe penalties for that so we're going to just talk a little bit about that but the fashionistas are here to help dress us into the new year so we're excited about yes, that indeed. but you know we did a lot of the christmas theme last week um okay. and with johnny gill Give oh, love right, on Christmas right, Day. Right, yeah. That was Very nice. beautiful. For our video segments. Yeah, mm -hmm. with the ho hos and, right. and the Santas and the toys. But you know, we know being the Christians yes, for the season. As, yes, we do. We know that it's Christ. And so we've got a, a little video that I want to introduce. Is it to Sarah? Mm -hmm. Okay, to Sarah with the BBC, BBC One Song of Praise. Mm -hmm. This is directed by the one and only Gary Boone, and it's Mary Did You Know? Mary, did you know that your baby boy will one day walk on water? Mary, did you know that your baby boy will save our sons and daughters? Did you know that your baby boy has come to make you new? This child that you've delivered will soon deliver you. Mary, did you know that your baby boy will give sight to a blind man? Mary, did you know that your baby boy will calm a storm with his hand? Did you know that your baby boy has walked where angels trod? And when you kiss your little baby, you kiss the face of God. Mary, did you know? Oh, Mary, did you know? Mary, did you know? Mary, did you know? Mary, did you know? The blind will see, the deaf will hear. The dead will live again, the lame will leap, the dumb will speak, the praises of the Lamb. Oh, Mary, did you know that your baby boy is Lord of all creation? Mary, did you know that your baby boy Will one day rule the nations? Did you know that your baby boy is heaven's perfect land? The sleeping child you're holding is a great He's the prince of peace. He's the great. 
was beautiful. Wonderful. Yes, yes, yes. Indeed. yes. I, I, I really did. I told you I like this song so much, yeah. and that that rendition was very well done. Oh, yes. oh, well, thank you. Yes, yes. <laughs> I was sharing with um, William that I'd gone through so many videos, and I that one just popped for me. I've never met this group. I've never mm -hmm. heard of this group, but I'm going to be looking for some more YouTube yeah. uh, videos from them. Sounds great. Um, so here we are at the financial here health segment. <laughs> he was singing during the, the, the I, segment, I, too. I do that. Yes. Um, we are here to talk about how you are going to be able to talk to your vet, your vet, um, your creditors, and your debtors. <laughs> no, I didn't have any eggnog yet. <laughs> so I do want to help you with that. But before we do that, we need to empower you so that you'll understand what you're going to be saying to them when you do talk to them. So, Eric, if you could put up the slides, please, that have to do with this health segment. And you can go and uh, l click on slide two that talks about lesson three. There we, are. there we are, yes. Lesson three last month had to do with not kicking your assets to the curb. Don't quit, don't quit, um, disqualify yourself. Don't disqualify your gifts, your talents. Don't think less of them because God can use everything every piece of you to further you and prosper you right. and we showed you that last month right and nothing goes to waste nothing goes yeah. to waste you may have thought that it was a mistake to get your degree in that area and now you are trying to get a degree in another area but believe me everything everything about you yes. is in essence it's important to the kingdom of god so don't you worry about wasted time there is none in this That's kingdom right. So when we look at lesson three, we were talking about what is an asset. And the assets are resources that you own that you can convert into cash. And um, we gave some examples about uh, those assets, too, being um, uh, maybe cash in the bank or an item that you own that you can sell and convert to cash, things like that. Mm -hmm. We also looked at what is a liability, which is an obligation to pay a product or a service or a debt. Right. Okay. And so that debt could be maybe you thought you had cash in the bank, but you're in the negative or the red, truly, and uh, you're not getting anything for the item you sold because right. it, people consider it not of value. But we also looked at what is your net worth. Yes. And that is the assets that you own minus the total liabilities or the debts that you own mm -hmm. and whatever that difference is. Mm -hmm. And the example that we put out there is if you have $100,000 in assets and you have $75,000 in debt, right. well, 75 minus 100 is 25. Is that right? Tw is 100 minus 75. Five, yes, yes, yes. Okay, so your net worth is only $25,000. Sorry. But that may not be a bad thing after all because we're going to talk a little bit about leveraging that $25,000. Okay. okay. So you were given like an, um, a homework assignment to list your things, list your assets, and, and list your liabilities. Okay. But we uh, also, if we put up the next slide, talked about the asset being an intangible asset. Uh -huh. and we, Yes, I love uh, intangible yes, assets because yes. they are non-physical assets having a value equal to or greater than a tangible asset. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that we thought about was what? an idea. Next slide, please. I knew that. <laughs> yeah, you came out with that last <laughs> at last month. So in this example, my error, that should say intangible asset, okay. like an idea. I took a look out there. And you know, on Facebook, there is so much creativity with people doing different things. Mm -hmm. And before you know it, someone else wants that and they're putting a price to it. Well, they just had an idea or they had a gift or a talent to do something. Right. Like I just um, joined one of the Facebook sewing clubs okay. out there. And just to see the remarkable tailoring that they have mm. done, and it's just a hobby for them. That's great. But they have orders now or they are earning a little bit of income. Income, but I just saw this one. I'm this, familiar with this company, too. <laughs> I'm not surprised, will you? <laughs> you know yeah. everything. Yeah, almost. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, someone came to me uh, a few years ago when I was in flea market, and I, I was lucrative in the flea market because I took a hobby and an idea in there. Okay. And they came to me and they said, Tracy, 
what do you think about this? And they had their logo and everything, and it was about poop, uh, scooping poop. Right. And they wanted to go around the metropolitan area as a business and scoop the poop. And I said, I think that's a great idea. Yeah. Go for it. Um, I don't know if they put enough um, uh, energy into it, but when I saw this, and yeah. that slide goes up one more time, Eric, this is exactly the one before that. This is exactly what we were talking about. This is pet, um, pet waste piling up. We can help. How? They're going to scoop that poop. That's right. And actually, their company is named is duty call <laughs> not yes, cute yes <laughs> so whatever your idea is that you have out there believe me it's a tan it's an intangible asset yeah. that can earn you some big bucks and just as below below selfish plug here it's one of the things that we're going to be talking about as we go into the new year yes and how you can actually get your idea from your head onto paper yes. and into the atmosphere and actually materialize. So if you've yes. got ideas, write them down because we're going to be helping you walk through the process of getting your ideas into reality in the new year. Mm -hmm. And I actually think that we, the assignment included intangible assets mm -hmm. and that you were to put that into your um, portfolio your Definitely. financial health Definitely. portfolio. So you do want to list that because it's going to come up again right. in other segments. Remember, all the segments intertwine. So we don't teach on one thing and then when it's over, throw it away. Oh no, you're going to see the practice of it come up again. So if we could look at that slide that says, what are some of the things to track? We talked about um, a spending plan and that the spending plan is your idea, your plan approach to how you're going to tackle your your debt and looking at the spending plan it is not quite a budget per se because that's mm -hmm. like a negative um tone to your how to manage your money we right. like it's a spending, spending plan. plan yes okay and that that spending plan won't let you spend any more than you have to it ensures that your bills are paid and it helps you save 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 and we're going to show you how that's possible but we listed some things to help you when you start are tracking what your debts, your liabilities, your assets look like. And I gave you an idea here. Next slide, please. So let's talk a little bit more now about the type of debt. So do you know what type of debts you have? Mm -hmm. and, and which ones are critical that need to be paid like right now or the lights are going out versus those that you can kind of manipulate and, and, and play with your spending plan to see how you can pay a little now until you can get to pay the whole thing off. That's what they call robbing Peter to pay Paul. Oh, right? now, I didn't want to say that. <laughs> that. That's why I get to say it. <laughs> okay, yeah, a little, but we're going to get out of that mindset, that, yeah. too. Okay. I, I, certainly, we, we want to be free from that mode, <laughs> but for right now, if, if it is, it is what it is. It is, it yeah. is. And you know, I, one of the things I want to cover in this segment, too, is that a lot of people put out there, you know, how that... Um, pie in the sky spending mm -hmm. plan a budget is supposed to to look you're supposed mm. to be able to pay everything off in the month etc and all that really? kind of stuff no not in this economy okay so we're going to get real with you and show you how to maneuver around your debt so that you can pay your things on time okay so when we're looking at that slide types of debts you see that there are secure debts and those are the right. debts that um have collateral and also um, that debt could be considered a mortgage or a car loan. And then if you don't pay the debt, then it could be um, repulled. Um, um. Exactly. Gone. Okay. And so in order to avoid having it gone, mm -hmm. then you can actually sell that. Sell it. Mm -hmm. And hopefully get enough money that you can pay that debt right. off. Or at mm -hmm. least pay it down yeah. to where it's manageable. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Then we have unsecured debt, which is a debt that is uh, has no collateral, like your credit cards. You know, they have those high interest rates as well. Right. And if you don't pay it, they can't come and collect from you. I mean, or repo it. Right. What they'll do is just put you in the collection agency, and there you'll wait until it's paid. But now it's a stain and everybody's on your credit gonna report. Know about it. Oh yeah, they are gonna <laughs> know about it. Somehow, I think your neighbors <laughs> find out about it. Yeah, they do. They do. <laughs> Now, you, what you can do is sell 
or return the assets and hope that they accept them back and accept what money you have on it and then try and negotiate <laughs> the balance thereof. But okay. that's what you consider an unsecured debt. Alrighty. Revolving debt are those debts that you pay monthly and they have a fixed amount, like your mortgage being a secure debt. It could be a secure debt and a revolving gotcha. debt. Mm -hmm. Uh, there is usually has a contract involved with it with a uh, fixed interest rate okay. or it could have a balloon type um, interest rate gotcha. and then it's not likely to rise you know, and I hear that people say you know I paid my mortgage and all of a sudden my mortgage has increased no really look at your papers your yeah. mortgage did not increase maybe the taxes did or even the interest rate yeah but the mortgage, mortgage itself, itself yeah, yeah because yeah. that's under a contract mm -hmm. and actually if if you look at the amortization of your contract, you'll see where the more you pay on the prime, the less the interest rate is. So your mortgage Correct. rate will be going down. Right, because the interest rate is attached to the outstanding balance. Yes, exactly. Right. And that's what they're basing the percentage on of, for your balance. Right. Okay. So people who have these type of revolving accounts, are very they manage them very well. Okay. Oh, as long as the economy is doing well and they haven't lost their job, they manage them very well right. because they know exactly what they're going to be paying every month. Mm -hmm. But then you have those installment payments where you pay monthly as well, and those are based on the percentage. Mm -hmm. And so the higher interest rate are usually accompanied with these installment type of payments. Um, and uh, the higher the interest rate, again, the less you pay down. But usually these installments are those things like you get in the mail, oh, you're approved for $5,000, mm -hmm. $16,000, right. $16, something like that. And uh, the problem with that is that the interest rate is very high. Gotcha. It could be 29 percent 30 percent and so you think that five thousand dollars is a great thing but by the time you finish yeah. paying on it you're almost paying ten thousand dollars back or more mm -hmm. or more so you really don't want those unless you have in your plan where you can pay it all back before it escalates and gets out of control Correct. otherwise it's going to cause problems so take a look at your spending plan to determine which category your debts are in so that we can begin to make the adjustments next slide please so where do you go from here oh we're not there yet <laughs> well i'm sorry we are <laughs> He throws me off when he puts those <laughs> slides down. <laughs> I love you, Eric. I love you. Okay, so look, this is where we're going to go. We're just three simple steps right now. Now, okay. granted, this is what I've been teaching for over 20 years. Yes. And this is what I practice in my life as well. Okay. And this is, um, in teaching this over 20 years, people have come back and, and say, yeah, that works for me. Gotcha. Okay. This is what you can do to help get you out of debt. You got to first get organized. So in step one, create your portfolio. That means group all your debts into a category, whether they're secured or unsecured, whether they're revolving or the installments, and identify which debts you need to have paid like right now utility bills right mm -hmm. uh, car note maybe if you're two three months behind or oh, they're coming to get it right those kind of things those are your urgent or essential bills then step two would be look at what is your network separate your income per your pay cycle if you get paid daily weekly bi-weekly or monthly and then apply the payments that you have towards your debt and, uh, and I'm going to teach you how to do it so that it's most advantageous gotcha. to you, okay? Because there is some debt that you, as you mentioned earlier, that could wait a little while. Right. As opposed to some debt that really needs to be addressed right away. Exactly. You know right. what? Why don't we just go ahead and, and talk about that right here before I get to step three. Okay. You know, in the real world, they say your mortgage is supposed to be paid by the first or your rent is supposed to be paid by the first. Okay. But we're in a, um, a volatile economy right now right. and nothing is safe or sure. And you may have um, been a little bit behind on your mortgage or your rent. Okay. So let's say you have negotiated that your mortgage, when you got it, was going to be paid by the fifth of the month. Right. Okay, and it's not late until the 20th of the month. Okay. Okay, and when it's late on the 20th of the month, then it's like $80 extra for you a late extra fee. charge, right? Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, but you're going to get paid on the 15th of the month. All right. And lights out if you don't pay the electricity before the 15th of the month. And we have to pay the lights. That's right. So, what's the dilemma here? 
I don't see one. No, not at all. Mm -hmm. Because the mortgage is due on the 5th. Right. I'm sorry, I don't have it, but I get paid on the right. 15th, and it's not considered late right. until the 20th, mm -hmm. but I'll have to incur an extra $80 charge, right. okay? My utilities are due on the 3rd. Gotcha. I'm paying my, my utilities, gotcha. okay? And then on the 15th, I will pay my mortgage, mm -hmm. and I still won't have that $80 late fee at all. Right. Now, who says I'm late? Because credit is reported every 30, 31 days. Right. Who says I'm late? Your mortgage company. But are they reporting that you're 30 or 31 days late? Nope. No. They're reporting that you are late within the eternal process. Right. Okay? Right. And, and so don't let them frighten you or check you sure. or, or make you push and commit to something that you just can't do. Right. Pay them on the 15th. Right. So what you're saying, too, is it goes back to the very first thing you said, which was get organized. And I, I don't think people really understood what that meant, because this is a part of getting organized. Yes. Actually knowing what the fine print, if you will, says on each one of your contracts. Yes. To exactly. know what the, the due date really is, the real mm -hmm. due date, because as Tracy just said, Although, yes, it's due on the 1st, it's not late until the 20th. Right. So bottom line is you got till the 19th to make something happen. That's right. Then the other piece to that is what are those fees that will be incurred? Because if you pay one late, there may be a $50 fee. You pay another late, there may be a $100 fee. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. now you got to weigh That's right. which one is most advantageous to be late with. That's right. <laughs> because That's at the right. end of the day, it may cost you more to pay one late over the other. Mm -hmm. And then certainly to know if your utilities <laughs> need to, to stay on, if you want them to That's stay right. on. In the dead but, of winter, know, yes. And, and you know, part of, I'll just say this, and I got to be, I'll be transparent. I've been there and done that. Mm -hmm. With some of these things, the bottom line is, is if, if, as long as you pay it mm -hmm. before the due date, you won't have to pay all of it. So let's just mm -hmm. say with your light bill, you're a couple of months behind for whatever reason, but you're a couple of months behind. And if they actually get turned off, they may actually not only say, okay, you got to pay us all that you owe us, mm -hmm. but we now want a security deposit mm -hmm. in addition right. to the late fee that you're going to incur. Right. So you really want to know all of the fine print behind all of your contracts. Mm -hmm. So that's the the what getting organized really means to right. know this up front. And I'm sure there's some people in that predicament now, and mm -hmm. they just don't have the money to come up with all of that. Right. You know, those are things. So that, pay on it though, because yes. it's better to pay on it than to just let it go. Right. And then it comes totally due. And now, you, in addition to what you did owe, you owe so much more. Mm -hmm. So, but that brings us to the step three. All right, so okay. you've listed all your debts. You mm -hmm. know what you can pay. You put what you can pay inside of your spending plan, and all you know right. what your months are going to look like and how the pays are going to fall, so who's going to get what or at what time. Right. But then you've got a list of other things that I just can't possibly pay this. These were okay. some bad decisions that I've made. Okay. I need to get out of this, and I don't know how. So what you want to do is put that list aside for right now. Those things that you think are impossible impossible to pay, put them aside. Because what we want to do is just stabilize what you can pay. We're going to return to the things that you say that you can't pay. Next slide, please. So now, this is an example of an income spending plan. So as you can see on the left column, I just chose 2004. These are bogus numbers that I've used in 2004. Okay. The income number one, week one through week five, uh, and the January months through December gives you an idea that this is an individual that gets paid $1,000 a week. Right. And so he's added up the $1,000 and has come up with $4,000 of income. This is net income gotcha. okay and so i mean every once in a while there is a month or two that has another thousand dollars look mm -hmm. forward to it okay <laughs> well see i'm trying to get you to the point where you don't look I know. forward to it uh, okay so you've got at least four thousand dollars a month that you are working with and at right. the end of that um year you have made about fifty thousand dollars sounds good if you have a dual income family, like individual or income number two, mm -hmm. this person gets paid bi-weekly. Okay. And bi 
weekly is just short of two thousand dollars and of course you've got your um, month or two in there that has that extra fifth week and their um, income is about forty one thousand dollars for the year so combined together you and your individual who's sharing your debts are about ninety one thousand dollars net income okay. that's pretty nice yeah mm -hmm. sure that's, is now, if you turn to the next slide, you see an example of secure debt. And in this secure debt, you've got a mortgage to pay, whether okay. you're an individual or whether you're someone who has a, um, a partner or, or someone sharing a roommate. Um, the mortgage, let's say, is $1,800 a month. At the end of that year, you see you're going to have about $21,600. Mm -hmm. And then in that is potential interest that you'll be able to write out at, write off at tax time. Gotcha. Okay. All right. So then you also see that you have a second mortgage or a second something. It could be an RV. It could be a, a boat. It could be land, uh, uh, retirement property, okay. anything. Okay. And then you have car number one and car number two insurance. And car number one insurance is so low because um, you're just carrying maybe collateral damage okay, right. is that right collateral. Mm -hmm. okay all right it's not um full but car collision I'm collision sorry. that's collision. it yes yeah. um car number two has um full insurance on it then you see your your pay monthly pay for car number two you see your cell phone and utilities and miscellaneous and i say cell phone 45 dollars because there are plans out there right now that will give you unlimited text unlimited voice unlimited data for 35 dollars that's an ugly phone that you get with no you. no you can attach it to the iphones you stop william stop that <laughs> okay so your total for essential debt okay. is about four thousand dollars here gotcha. okay all right and so if you look at the bottom that gives you a reminder of what the income, income was, was for the two income family mm -hmm. so do you think that if your debts are about four thousand dollars looking at the total income that you can mm -hmm. afford those debts right now yeah 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 that's a perfect Definitely. thing and, and actually if you look over you get so much left over exactly mm -hmm. if you go all the way to the total column you know looking right. at how much you have left over um you could pay state farm because state farm or your car insurance is 720 dollars for the entire year oh wow yeah yeah you can pay that you off pay that off mm -hmm. and either keep that money save that money spend that money as a, a, a kudos to you mm -hmm. or put apply it to another debt so your spending plan is talking to you, but now this is just essential debt. Let's take a look right. at the next slide where we're looking at the unsecured debt. Oh my gosh, mm. here we go. Unsecured debt could be those personal loans that we talked about where they send you a check in the mail for $5,000 and tell you go ahead and cash it. Okay. It's all yours, okay. but you didn't flip it over to see that it's at 29%. OK, you gotcha. don't want to do that. Um, let's say you have some office space because you're trying to get your business up. OK. And whether that office space is uh, in the home or it's external, you're spending some money on that. And also your um, your installment credit cards, all of that is there. Um, if you look down at that home landline, that is your landline at home. We use cell phones so much. A lot of people Who do. Who does traditional phones like that? <laughs> your hand down <laughs> <laughs> well mo mainly when you're going to buy something that's a major piece of property they want to uh, it's, a, a it's part of the package too sometimes yes 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 yeah. yes and so i have uh, uh if you go to uma.com o-o-m-a.com okay. you can get that traditional bill down to less than five dollars a month let me write that down yes o-o-m-a.com I have had UMA for about a year now, and all I pay on my landline, which is really a VoIP line, okay. um, is connected with my internet, is right. less than five dollars a and month. That's why you really need it. Yes, yeah. yes, 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 yes. Okay, so now you've got this unsecured debt that's totaling almost two thousand dollars a month. Take a look at the summary at the bottom. Mm -hmm. Your monthly income is about seven to nine thousand dollars because of those extra paychecks. Gotcha. Your monthly debt is about five to six thousand mm -hmm. dollars, and when you subtract that, your remainder is about two to four thousand dollars, depending on if you're going to be working with that extra paycheck. Okay. So it looks like you're able you to handle this debt. Some money left over, sure. <laughs> and believe me, when you sit down and do your spending plan and write in there what your debts are, you're going to find that you do, in fact, have a lot of money Hidden left money. over. Yeah. Yes. It's just that you've been buying those coffees that are 5 to $7 <gasps> every morning. No. 
Oh, yeah, and buying those lunches when you can take a peanut butter and jelly sandwich and no. a couple of apple slices and a bag of chips. Not our audience. <laughs> oh, yes, you can. <laughs> so if you turn to the next slide, please. Okay. Okay, when we're looking at how to pay this, you see this is a person's first paycheck. Right. Okay, I know that I get paid either bi-weekly, weekly, whatever. Okay. All right. And I know what my debts are now and how much they're going to cost me out of the month. So this is how I think that I can lay my debts across my income when my checks come oh, in. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so that if I do this, then at the end of the month, I'm going to pay on specific things, and it's a mixture of the secure and unsecured here. Right. I'm going to pay on specific things that will range from a little under $1,000 right. to almost $1,500, okay. okay? And where I don't make enough mm -hmm. in the month um, for to handle $1,500, then I'm going to move some things around. Ah. I'm going to manipulate my spending plan okay. so that it works for me. If you look down which income will pay the debt that week, Here's income number one. Remember, $1,000 right, a right. week. Mm -hmm. Okay, if this is what's incurred in the month, I see. do you think I can pay my yes, debts? and I have a little bit left over. Oh, yes, for yes. One of, at least one of those expensive coffees. Yeah, exactly. And so if you look down a little further, here comes income number two. Oh, what joy, what joy, what joy there is. <laughs> we can share these debts now yeah. and still have enough money left over. Yes. And I know what some people are asking. Well, suppose I don't make enough right. money. Okay, if there's not enough in the first place. That's right. Yeah, you're going to have to make some decisions because your spending plan talks to you. It speaks to you. It tells you how much money you need to make in order to get rid of that debt. And mm -hmm. there's a formula in my class that I teach the women to look at, you know, the number of hours that you work divided by the total cost of your debt mm -hmm. in order to determine what you need to make per hour okay. to pay that debt. All right. And whether that's uh, for six months, yeah, nine months or a year, you, it can be done. So this is how people that's determine wonderful. how to get out of debt in a year or in 18 months. This right, is how right. I did it okay. um, in that short amount of time when I got into that, that severe debt. So then we're going to wrap this up real quick and talk about what to do when the creditors call you. Because I said those lions, tigers, and bears out there, mm -hmm. they're dialing you, emailing you, they're talking to your, your neighbors. Hello? Hello? Yes, Knocking they're there. The they're not going away That's at all. Day. You can't run from them. You can't hide. Bad and so boys, bad boys. Let's boys, talk man. about the debt, the debtors first. Already? So... You've got your spending plan in hand. Now you are empowered. You know what you can pay and what you cannot pay. Okay. And no one's going to make you try and pay what you cannot pay because that's just going to keep you in debt. So what you want to do now is just negotiate with your debtors. Mm -hmm. The women that I have found that I have taught in this class that got it, mm -hmm. they went home and picked up the phone and called the debtors. They right. didn't wait for the debtors right. to call them. Gotcha. And then they told them, this is what I can pay. I know I owe this debt. And right. I I am going to pay my debt off, right. but this is all I can pay right now. Will you accept this? Okay. Now, some of the debtors will say, well, yeah, we'll accept that. We'll work with that. We'll just jot it in your notes, you mm -hmm. know, but if you miss, we're going to come after you again. Well, right. that's, that's fine. You know, there's a possibility that you will miss, but you, at least you have a plan in hand. But then there are some debtors will say, well, you know what? How about we just settle this pennies on the dollar? Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. Okay, and we will give you a, a letter that says that we have written this debt off. Now, did they really write it off, William? No. No, that debt is still there. They're mm -hmm. going to show that they had this agreement with you and that we settled or mm -hmm. that they settled this debt at this amount of money. Right. But at the end of the year, you're going to get a little slip from that debtor That's that right. says this is the balance on what you owe. And so you'll need to take that to the tax table mm -hmm. when you go. But we're going to talk about that next month. Okay. So right now, if Eric, if you can put up the um, slide that talks about what the debtor's rules of the game are they can't call you before or after i'm sorry before 8 a.m or after nine o'clock at night your local time they can't call you repeatedly and they can't call you at any time you previously stated as an inconvenience you work at home you work eight hours at home you can't afford to talk to the debtor so you're going to have to tell them don't call me between nine and five okay. and so then they have up until nine nine o'clock that night to talk to you there's no law that says you have to communicate with the debtor um 
um, who's trying to collect that debt from you by phone. What you can do is tell them, I would prefer to talk to you in writing. Send me a letter mm -hmm. or here's my email address. Um, but if the collector continues to call you, um, to call you repeatedly even after you have hung up on them because you can hang up on them. It's still not going to let them go away. You can hang up on them. Um, if they continue to call you after you hang up with them and tell them stop calling me at this time, then you can report them. So all you have to do to stop debt collectors from calling you is to tell them that you prefer to communicate them with them in writing. Mm -hmm. Stick to your agreement because that's that's your integrity. Right. That's and, your and word. And if you know there is going to be an issue with that agreement, call them beforehand. Yes. Don't wait until afterwards or not say anything. Yeah, but, exactly. But renegotiate. Yes, yes. And so, Eric, we want to end this presentation here because we do have a few more slides, but I, we're um, walking into the fashionista's time, and I don't want to do that because they have some great things to yes. tell us. So um, let me introduce to you our fashionistas. They are back again, and that is Danae and Courtney. All right. Welcome. All right. Be a little slow, but that's okay. We're all here at the table and we're yeah. waiting to hear some good news about this season. All right. What do you have for us today? Well, today we're going to talk about um, internet purchases, eBay, um, some of the larger companies, and what's the best route to go about buying things online. Okay. okay. Um, and also, what you can do with the things you buy. You know, you don't have to buy a full look, how to make those pieces work for your whole wardrobe, and how to make those things fit in. Okay. Great. So do you, do we need to put up the slides now? Um, well, I think I'll go over the first thing, which is uh, read everything. Okay. So when you um, when you go online and you see something you really love, whether it be eBay or Etsy or any of these companies where you buy things online, read everything. Mm -hmm. Read the um, read the uh, return policies. Read what the thing actually is, what it's made of. Mm -hmm. Um, I know I made a mistake. I got really excited because I thought I found a really good price on a perfume that I really liked. Right. And it was a miniature. And I just got oh, excited about the price. Wow. And I clicked the buy button and was, gotcha. like, really excited. <laughs> <laughs> and then it came in the mail. Yeah, and then it, it came, you, like, this much. You needed much. a magnifying glass. Yeah, and I was like, what is this? <laughs> I had to go back and reread it. And I was like, okay, I'm stupid. That's a good that's one. Off. Yeah, that so, is. That is a good one. Like, read everything. Like, that's my, I mean, even um, sometimes when you're looking at something and it looks like it's a, a, a designer bag, they'll tell you it's not. But you need to read that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that's my first rule. Okay. Right. Okay. Second rule is you can typically find better deals online. A lot of people think you have to go to the store every week because I know discounters run different promotions every week, but a lot of times the better deal really is online. Okay. Um, and a lot of retailers are offering free shipping now. Mm -hmm. You can return it for free. So you don't really need to be scared about if something doesn't work out, you're not stuck with it, or you can even return it back in store. So okay. always look online first for the better deal. There are certain websites. Um, one that I was actually introduced to, it's called The Find, T-H-E-F-I-N-D.com. Okay. You go on there, you put into the search box, whatever the item is you're looking for, and it will bring up for you where you can find it and who has it for the cheapest price. Cool. Mm -hmm. Yep. So that's tip number two. Um, tip number three um, is um, look for the special um, coupons and discounts and deals. Sometimes if you just go and put in um, in your search discount um, at Gap, right. whatever the newest codes will come up, right. mm. and it can save you 50% off, 40% off, wow. you know, clear yeah. on clearance and on full price. Mm -hmm. So, you know, if you're in a space where you need, a, you know, some winter clothes maybe your stuff is worn out or worn down or you went in the closet and stuff doesn't fit the way it used to and you need to look a certain way mm -hmm. those type of discounts can get you a lot further mm -hmm. you know and <laughs> sure. so like it's, it's amazing what's you know how many deals you can really make like you know banana republic almost weekly has some type of discount or deal and it's good conservative pieces that you can wear to work if you work in a place where you need to look conservative mm -hmm. and so there's like all of these sort of options in terms of just going online and looking up discounts and there's you know all these websites that that's all they're dedicated to doing True. is okay. finding out what the cheapest 
version of something is or who has a coupon that will work for you online or work mm -hmm. for you in store. Okay. Mm -hmm. Great. And to pick, sort of piggyback off of that, you can even sign up for apps on your phone. Like there's um, Retail Me Not. Mm -hmm. They'll send you notifications when whatever discounter or whomever is having a sale. And so you can keep track of it that way too. So. Mm -hmm. Okay. Great. Okay. You want me to take this one? All right. So you've heard me say this before. I'm going to say it again. Stay on budget, w especially getting involved in auctions, which I'm an auction queen. Oh, I love auctions. Yeah. <laughs> but stay on budget yeah. because the mm -hmm. game with auctions yeah. are is that they'll chum the water. And so everybody gets panicked that, they're, that the, somebody else is going to get this item. And you start going outside of your budget. Mm -hmm. You know you have $50. That's right. Right. You don't have $55. You don't have $72. Make sure you include in that budget what the shipping That's is right. because shipping is different for everybody. Mm -hmm. And depending upon where it's coming from, they're going to hit you with a, a shipping fees that can be tricky, especially mm -hmm. if it's coming out of the country. That's right. And so that being the case, like make sure you're like, make your decision. I love those boots. I love those shoes, but right i'll pay no more I, than yeah mm -hmm. gotcha. and don't don't bid the the amount mm -hmm. bid just under the amount you'd be surprised how many times you went under the amount that's, that's right. your budget buster yeah. mm -hmm. okay being careful of counterfeits we have spoken oh. about this before mm -hmm. yes. but it's um, especially important when you're purchasing online because you don't know where things are coming from you don't you're not really necessarily familiar with people, especially on eBay. So just being careful of that and reading fine print. Um, yeah, also, if it seems like it's a really good deal, but it's, it doesn't seem right, don't buy it. Mm -hmm. it nobody dies if you don't buy a Chloe bag, right. <laughs> you know? Right. And so, like, if, if you know that bag retails at five, $6,000, and you're looking at it and they only want 200, <laughs> Something's up. Mm -hmm. I mean, maybe it's a real Chloe bag, or maybe it's the Louis Vuitton bag that you of your dreams. Uh, probably it's a counterfeit, mm -hmm. and just beware of that, because mm -hmm. you know you can't spill any tears over something that you can't return over something, right. and you knew it wasn't legit to begin with. Mm -hmm. I mean, you could, you know, you can be sad about it, but be sad in your corner. Mm -hmm. And so, because mm -hmm. it's like you sort of set you up in that moment. I mean, I've gotten really good deals on things and on really great designer pieces, but you kind of have to know what you're dealing with mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. you know, and just be ahead of the game. And you can ask the Louis Vuitton people, did you guys do a handbag like this? Or is this, an, um, is this the pricing for this item? And that, because they don't know what you're calling about. So sure, they'll answer the question, mm -hmm. you know. And so it's there's ways of researching what something should be. Mm -hmm. Now, aren't there ways to research some of these uh, providers, if you will, to see what they're, especially when you mentioned like a place like eBay. That, Everybody has yes. a track record right. and you live and die by your mm -hmm. track record mm -hmm. on eBay, on Etsy, um, on some of the other auction sites too. You're, the companies will yank you. If you're, right. if you're, they're getting a lot of information about you or a lot of chatter about you that gotcha. isn't good. And so people live and die by those. Right. So you want so, to look at that track record. Yeah. Those high sellers, mm -hmm. they're high sellers because they're legit. Most of the mm -hmm. time people gotcha. don't have issues with them and they right. get high scores. Right. right. So and they, this is a guy, this $5,000 bag mm -hmm. at 200 bucks and he's never sold anything there before. It's mm, uh -huh. probably want to stay away from yeah. that. Right. right. You may want to sidestep him. Right. <laughs> it's a little Christmas bit. money. Yeah, just be realistic, yeah. Yeah. you know, in your expectation. And um, PayPal um, is a great buffer. Okay. Between you and those people, because PayPal will go for bat for you. Um, will go to bat for you. Okay. Um, if you don't really, or it, you can put the money in the PayPal account and like pay an out of it. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, if you if you feel like that's an easier way or a better way for it to work for you. Gotcha. But um, I use PayPal for a lot of things. It makes things a lot easier mm -hmm. yes. in terms of dealing with. Um, well, even when I have sold on eBay, mm -hmm. the money sits in PayPal for a few days before it goes into the account. But the money sits there in case. Um, the person doesn't get the item, okay. right? Or something goes sideways, so the money isn't really 
is still sort of sitting in limbo right. and they have they can't send you your money back that way mm-hmm. as opposed to you having to now fight some person somewhere else in the globe right. over mm-hmm. your fifty dollars gotcha. mm-hmm. so. we have about a couple more minutes so i guess we can go right into the <laughs> slides yeah, then slides. so mm-hmm. we can see some items that have been purchased online and how to work them into a wardrobe and make some looks from them so eric can you load the slides please Okay, and so, um, oh, wonderful. Okay. <laughs> so the shoes are eBay finds, and the trench coat is, or is an eBay find. Mm-hmm. And so what we did was, you, you look, you know, you need an outfit to go somewhere. We sort of did a boho chic look. Um, but the shoe is, you know, it's not a shoe that you're going to find everywhere. It's mm-hmm. out of season. Whenever they created that shoe, that shoe doesn't exist any longer. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's it's a piece that you get to wear and it's a statement piece. Yeah, mm-hmm. very nice. mm-hmm. And, you know, you have that option of putting it with things that are sort of basic but not basic. And mm-hmm. it though it make, pumps up the look a little bit. Sure. Gives it mm-hmm. a little edge. Do you remember Next. how much you paid for those? How much? Oh, probably 50 bucks. 50 oh, bucks. get out yeah. of here. Yeah. Like oh, the whole outfit. Italian made Enzo's. For the yeah. shoes. Oh, for the it's shoes. For the, the shoes yeah. were 50. Okay. The jacket, Danae? I, I might have paid $20. Okay. The wow. dress was 16 mm-hmm. And the handbag was, I, I got that from a store, but I, it's been so long. Okay. <laughs> Next slide. Next slide. Um, it's sort of the same game. I found those, those wool um, shorts on ebay i won an auction i think i paid 14 dollars with shipping for them the shoes were are um a higher end brand they're kohan and they're a limited edition but i didn't pay very much for those i might have paid 80 dollars for those and now they would normally go for <clears throat> probably the kohan, they're probably. pretty expensive probably about 300 dollars. so um but i don't i never pay more than wow that's great yeah, okay. next slide So with this one, the jacket was a limited edition item done by Tom Brown yeah, for, mm-hmm. um, it was that Neiman Marcus Target um, sort of mashup. Okay. Um, and I missed it in the store. I never found my size in the store. Mm-hmm. But it was on eBay a year later, and I mm. probably paid $15 wow. with shipping for okay. it. Okay. Um, and it was it was a really good steal. Same thing. Those are um, Todd shoes. Those are probably seven hundred dollar pumps. Mm-hmm. I paid seventy. Okay. <laughs> so, <laughs> Get out. Next slide, please. Um, the boots I got from DSW. I think I paid about thirty five bucks for them. Um, the skirt I found in the store. I loved it. But I couldn't find my size in it mm-hmm. and found it um, on, I think, Saks. Mm-hmm. And they were in one of their big sales at the end of the season and ended up paying maybe $50 for a $150 skirt. Right. Mm-hmm. So. Mm-hmm. Wow. Wow. And so I think those are, that's the, the mm-hmm. slides. Okay. Yeah. Oh, so excellent. You know, so you just keep. Um, oh, yeah. Yeah. And the, those that, the boots that had the, the handbag all came from online. Mm-hmm. And, you know, the boots were, uh, um, they're Todd's, they were eBay fine, you know. And then th- this is just more items that I've found and picked up along the way. Okay. Yeah. All right. So what spending plan in hand mm-hmm. and budget, that, that naughty little word, you can really go out there and make a difference. Yeah, really absolutely. Stack that yeah, and, and update your wardrobe without, mm-hmm. you know, breaking the bank mm-hmm, mm-hmm. excellent okay. excellent can't wait to see you next month yeah. when we get together <laughs> and talk about okay now we got this debt how do we get out of it or how do we return those items you know <laughs> yes so we want to thank our fashionistas for joining us Always today yes yeah. and we actually want to thank you too for joining us we're going to be back next week with our physical health segment and all of the tenants are going to be at the table yeah. because we want to sign off the year with you and tell, talk to you about what's coming up in 2015 That's Special. But we're going to do something a little different in mm-hmm. closing out this segment. I found a video with Mary J. Blige and Andre, um, Andre Bocelli, and Andre they Bocelli. are singing a duet, What Child Is This? We're not going to come back off of this video, so happy holidays, happy holidays to you. Be safe, be smart, be healthy. Be healthy.
holiday CD called My Christmas. It really is gorgeous. It's in stores now, produced by hit maker David Foster. When I heard cut number six, it just, I started to cry. I think it's my favorite uh, CD for Christmas this year. So we called Andre and said, you have to be a part of the show, singing a beautiful version of What Child Is This. Welcome Andre Bocelli and my dear friend Mary J. Blige with David Foster on piano. <laughs> What child is this who lay to rest on Mary's breast? He His mother sings her lullaby. Oh, joy, Christ is born. The pain and the sun. Thank you.